Shalom. First off, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukhah, Kodash, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, hold on to truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from, and peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect. Yahweh is the heavenly father's true name in ancient Hebrew, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Israelites, and Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son, the savior, redeemer of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, I just wanted to, you know, touch on this real quick. This is uh, from um, Yahoo News. There was a um, 60 Minutes uh, um, episode last night, uh, Sunday, that uh, basically spoke upon the, um, the, 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 <laughs> the revelation, the revealing of, you know, um, the Esau's government, you know, manifesting, letting it be known that they actually know that uh, so-called UFOs uh, are, are, you know, are in fact real all right it's not you know something that is uh urban myth or so to speak but um you know we know them as uh not unidentified but uh um identified flying objects all right because you know according to the scriptures they are are identified as the vehicles or the chariots of israel because you know esau has his his vehicles whether it be you know a car you know a a, a train a boat you know, in an airplane, but Israel, the sons of God, Yasharala, we also have vehicles, you know, uh, for, of our own, which are what you are, what, what they are showing in these, um, different military, um, footages, all right. What, what people see, you know, what people record, uh, those, uh, those, uh, flying objects that are moving at inhumane speeds, all right, doing, you know, uh, 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 maneuvers that are not, uh, uh, you know, breaks the laws of physics, breaks the laws of gravity, so on and so forth. Those are the those are the vehicles that we are going to have or inherit when we have when we uh, when when the kingdom is established. And those vehicles are the actual vehicles of our salvation as well. How we're going to be delivered out of the destruction that is going to take place here in Babylon the Great, right? Which Yahweh Shai and the angels. Our celestial brothers are coming in those vehicles to wage a uh, war during World War Three, you know, and, and those vehicles, just like Esau has his, you know, uh, uh, airplanes, his F, you know, 30 F-35s and his bomber, B-2 bombers and things of that nature. <laughs> well, guess what? Yahweh Shai and his army also have, you know, uh, uh, air force. All right. So it says UFOs are very real. 60 minutes reports. They're still unidentified and they aren't American. And, you know, they say that because America prides itself on having the, you know, the greatest military force, you know, the greatest uh, uh, air force. All right. Their, their weapon, their, their, uh, their technological weaponry. But these, um, these vehicles, all right, these flying objects that are being reported, you have, you know, by the Navy or by these, you know, uh, uh, airmen. They're saying that their techno the technology that they're witnessing is far beyond what any uh, uh, aircraft that they, they you know that that American has. All right, so let's read this real quick. It says we have tackled many strange stories on sixty minutes, but perhaps none like this. CBS News correspondent Bill Whitaker said on Sunday's Sunday's night show, "It's the story of the U.S. government's grudging." Uh, acknowledgement of unidentified aerial phenomena UAP more commonly known as UFOs and why are they uh, you know grudgingly or grudgingly uh, uh, acknowledging you know this uh, phenomena you know because it's it's becoming too it's becoming too uh, uh, um, prevalent you know it's coming too prevalent and ultimately because the Lord is having you know everything come to light as the scripture says you know that which is a uh, you know, done in, in darkness, everything should be brought to light. See, Esau been knew about these things for for <laughs> for centuries, man. Okay, they, they they this the the uh, the knowledge of UFOs is not something new. Okay, however, Esau through his deception has been classifying these things and 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 trying to hide it so. Really, so that he, it doesn't seem as though that there is a, a higher power or something more sophisticated and advanced than Esau's technology. All right. And, and, and also the most high 
he has done everything in in a moment in in a matter of time. Now the Lord in these last days is letting this information, you know, become more and more uh, widespread. So read and on it says after decades of public denial, <laughs> Esau, you know, uh, uh, being a liar that he is, the Pentagon now admits there's something out there, and the U.S. Senate wants to know what it is. A declassified report from the Doctorate of National Intelligence and the Pentagon is due to be uh, handed over to the Senate Intelligence Committee in June. Whitaker offered a preview speaking with some familiar for voices in the UA UAP uh, sphere. Luis Babo, whatever his last, Eliz uh, Elizondo, former head of the Pentagon Advanced Aerial Space Threat Identification Program, retired Navy Commander Dave Favor, who's F FA-118 uh, F Quadrant encountered a UPA off California in 2014. Christopher Mellon, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense L um, Intelligence, and some new ones like Commander Alex Dietrich, who viewed the UAP with favor. 60 Minutes shows classified, declassified footage previously leaked to the New York Times by Mellon and Elizondo. It's bizarre and unfortunate that someone like myself has to do something like that to get a national security issue like this on, on the agenda. You know, and and we you know why are they viewing this as a national security because of the advanced technology that they have that these uh identified flying objects are showcasing. And even though you know the the encounters that these different commanders and, and military people have had with the uh, chariots weren't actually violent, you know, they didn't show any type of you know uh uh no, they didn't show any type of strength and weaponry. They just uh, they classify this as a national security because of the far superior technology that the, the, the chariots were showcasing. OK, because being able to go from zero to I believe they said, you know, thousands of miles per, uh, you know, moving thousands of miles per second. All right. Just like that, that right there is and you and, and you know, something like that is not based off of this realm's technology because Esau, he has whatever technology that this realm has. Esau has it. Esau has has complete control over it because the scripture says you what that the that the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. So. Esau has searched out, you know, this world for, you know, uh, uh, well, based off of what the Most High has given him, um, out of all, out of all the heathen, Esau will be the one who has a top uh, technology that is uh, given to man right now. But what they're witnessing is something that is not uh, man-made. All right, so it says every everyone Whitaker spoke with underscored. That unidentified means just that. That un that unidentified means just that. Not yet identified. There's no evidence these phenomena are extraterrestrial, and they are a potential national security risk. No matter who created them, because the technology seems far beyond what the U.S. can currently produce. All right, and it and it's not even extraterrestrial. It's celestial. It's coming from a different realm. It's coming from a different. A different uh uh you can't even describe it because even with Paul when he went to the spirit world he said what that uh there was no words lawful words for him to utter what he saw meaning that there is nothing that you can compare the spirit world to when you look at the the, the physical realm that we're in right now okay and that's why it says the technology seems far beyond what us can currently produce so it says melon said that UFOs are not secret U.S. government technology, and I can say that with a very high degree of confidence, in part because of the positions I held in the department. I know the process. So this man who has, you know, this credible uh, uh, um, positions in, in the departments that he worked in, he's saying that this technology that he's witnessing is not a part of any U.S. government secret, secret you know, uh, um, uh, programs. It's something that is 
completely separate from this realm, from this world. Says former Navy pilot Ryan Graves told Whitaker that fellow pilots began seeing UAPs hovering over restricted airspace off of Virginia Beach in 2014. After upgrades to their radar, they continue seeing UAPs off of the Atlantic coast every day for the last couple of years. And that's what? The recon. Okay. That's that's the, the angels, which are part of the military of Yahweh Shai. <laughs> they're doing recon on their enemies, who they're going to come back, who are they going to overtake, who are they going to who they're going to destroy. All right. That's why they're they're these uh, the chariots are consistently always um being seen around military uh air, you know, military uh um bases, whether it be navy, whether it be army, whether it be coast guard. So on and so forth. Okay, and that's why they had Trump. And I say they had Trump, speaking about the elites, because that wasn't no Trump's idea. They had him create a space force <laughs> because as it is written in the scriptures that um, there's going to be a war, actually. You know, I won't pull it up. I just, you know, uh, actually, I get it. You know, I always bring out the scriptures. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, Verse 7, was it 17? No, 7. Revelation 12, verse 7, it says, And there was a war in heaven. And what, when you fight a war, what do you use? Especially during, you know, in, in, in this day and age that we're in right now. All right, even in the ancient world, the 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 chariots, the, the, the men that was on the chariots, those were, those fighters were the higher, the higher ranking um, or higher skilled fighters. If you had a large, chariot um platoon so to speak you know it's you you're going to have a, a, a an advantage because being a footman but then being a footman is one thing but being on a chariot you know on a horse and and the chariots on the back on the, you know on the back and you fighting from there it gives you an advantage because it'll be harder for a footman you know people that's just on their feet to to attack you and you can move at a faster pace you know and, and with precision see while the while the chariot is being moved, you you know you either swing your sword or you swing your bow. You know, or, or you you know you shoot your bow and arrow. All right. So chariots are vehicles that the Lord Bashim uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to be using in order to overtake and destroy Esau and these other armies in this up and coming war. And they're also going to be our deliverance. So it says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. All right, Michael, one of the archangels, and his angels, Michael being, you know, uh, uh, he says in his angels because he is a, a high-ranking angel. So the angels that are underneath him are what? They're under his, uh, uh, the Lord set it up that they're under uh, his uh, uh, um, command. And uh, uh, Michael being under the command of Yahweh Shah. And they all, you know, being under the command of Yahweh. All right? So it says, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Speaking about the beast, all right, NATO and the EU, and also the the ones that, as we read in Second Ezra's thirteen chapter, the other nations that are going to see the the return of Yahweh Shai and these the, and the army that Yahweh Shai has coming with them, you know, they're going to stop fighting and what turn their their fight to the Lord. And it says, and the dragon fought in his angels, meaning what the space force, the air force, you know, the navy, the uh, uh, the marines, the uh, army. Coast Guard, those uh, you know, those are all the angels, are the are the uh, the uh, military of the dragon. So it says, but what and prevail not. So the dragon, the beast, Esau is not going to win this war. It says neither was there a place found anymore in heaven, meaning what in a position of authority. They're not going to be found after the end of this war, after the end of this fight. They're not going to be found the victors. They're going to be found the losers. And what happens when you lose a war? <laughs> you go into what? You go into captivity. And that's why we talk about how Israel, because Yahweh Shai and the angels are coming to fight on behalf of Israel, the sons of God. That's a nation, all right, <laughs> of, uh, of people. So they're coming to fight on the behalf of Israel. And once Israel gets the victory through Yahweh Shai, these other nations are going to be become our uh, uh, become become captives, and their spoils will be ours. 
and that's why and that's why Yahweh Shai is returning. So let's get let's get something else in here. I just want to show this clip right here because what it not the whole thing, but just the the, the back end of it. Bill Whitaker on unidentified aerial phenomena. This week on 60 Minutes. So I just want to go to the demonstration. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence for Presidents Clinton and George W. Bush and was on the staff of the Senate Intelligence Committee. He had access to top secret government programs. He says what Dietrich and Fravor witnessed demonstrated technological capabilities beyond those of the U.S. military's most advanced aircraft. In the case of the Nimitz, they seem hmm. to, these vehicles seem to have unlimited loiter time. Unlimited. Which we don't have. We're limited in terms of, of altitude. It's hard to design something that functions well at ground level that can go, you know, to 60,000 or 80,000 feet. And then drop. And then, and yeah, and then drop down to the deck or drop to 20,000 feet, and, you know, and it's like a straight vertical line. In seconds. Yeah, in seconds. And this has been captured on radar. Yeah. I've talked to some of the radar operators who observe that. Then the acceleration is beyond any, far beyond anything that we, Far beyond. Hold on, hold on. You, you hear that uh, terminology? Far beyond, right? Hey, man, the, the Lord is beautiful, man. And, and we're about to see some amazing things, man. Okay, this, this, the Lord is about to turn, turn it up in this world. All right, the scripture says it's going to be a time like never before, man. And that's why the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to keep us stable because what is about to be real, what is about to be witnessed, what is the Lord, Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is about to showcase on this earth, you're not going to be able to wrap your head around it uh, uh, um, logically, all right? According to this world, the wisdom of this world, you have to be legit spiritual of a spiritual mind. You have to come from, your mind has to come from a different realm for you to even, for you to be able to understand this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Then shall that righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Speaking about who? The, the starting with the prophets and the elect of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the ones that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, the ones that departed from the from this evil world, from this evil uh, uh, world, the ways of this world, and conformed themselves to the perfect will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, that, that had faith in the Lord, that uh, obeyed in his commandments instead of giving yourself over to the, 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 to the lust of the eye, the, the pride of life, the wicked seducings of the abominations of this world. All right. Even though you got ostracized, even though you got talked about, you got laughed at, you know, you got made fun of, you got told that, you, you know, you're wasting your life, that what you what you what you believe in don't make no sense. So on and so forth, the Lord said he's going to allow that righteous man to stand in great boldness in that day. It says, and when they shall see it, who is they? The, the, the non-believers, the, the ones that spoke with incredulity. It says, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. So far beyond all that they looked for. And what does this man say that? What he witnessed, or not him, but what, what he has been told, that's Satan. Probably. Him, that it was for the technology was far beyond anything that uh, that the U.S. has. You know, and it's like a straight vertical line. In seconds. Yeah, in seconds. And this has been captured on radar. Yeah. I've talked to some of the radar operators who observe that. Then the acceleration is beyond anything. Far beyond anything that, we, <laughs> that we're capable of. So, What's the fastest one of our jets can go? Probably for a very brief period of time, uh, 1,500 or 2,000 miles an hour. Um, nothing near the degree of acceleration that has been observed in some of these cases. There's nothing we can build that would be strong enough to endure that amount of force and acceleration. There's nothing we can build that can be strong enough to endure that amount of force. So Esau basically saying, if these, when these vehicles that they have witnessed turns hostile, which according to the scriptures, they will. There is nothing Esau can do to combat it. And that's why the scripture says in the book of Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. Because we just read that they should be amazed with terrible, uh, 
with terrible fear, right? Second Ezra chapter 13, verse uh boom. Eight. It says, and after this, I beheld and lo, let me read it, verse uh five. It says, and after this I beheld and lo. And lo, there was a gathered, there was gathered together together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. This, the man that came out of the sea, speaking about Yahweh Shai. And, and, and the sea is not talking about the a, a literal sea, but it's really talking about the heavens, the firmament. All right. The, the, uh, the Shemayim. All right. The heavens. So it says, and I beheld and lo, he had graven himself a great mountain and flew upon it, flew upon it. What and what what flies? All right. <laughs> that Yahweh Shai is coming in. The chariots, okay. Yahweh Shai is coming in a in, in in a gigantic fathership with other with the with his rest of his army following following uh, uh no uh, behind him, pursuant to Revelations nineteen you know verse eleven on down. It says, "But I would have seen the region or the place where the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld, and lo." All they, all they that were gathered together, the the rest of the, the, the world's armies, Esau, the beast, the dragon, and the other heathens' armies, all they that were gathered together to subdue him were a, were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. They're going to be sore afraid because their technology that they have can't compare their weaponry. Their vehicles can't compare to the vehicles that their that Yahweh Shai and the angels are coming with. So it's not even going to be a fight. It's not even going to be, you know, a, a actual, you know, some death, some some fatalities on on both sides. No, it's just going to be a complete slaughter, a complete destruction. And that's why the Lord allowed Esau to build himself up just like how he built up Pharaoh, just so the Lord can show his power. Because you even have it right now, even though uh, America has goals across the world, colonizing, destroying, rape, robbing, pill and pillaging, taking resources uh, from other nations, they've been allowed to do this because of what? Because of their of of their great you know military might. Even though right now the Lord is is having the uh, weak side and strong, he, uh, Esau still sees themselves as being far superior and a lot of the other nations you know do as well okay they still see america as being this uh um this uh, uh nation or empire that is um very difficult to beat very difficult to overcome and that's why the scripture says it's here in the book of revelation 13 verse uh, 4 it says and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast and the and they worship the beast, saying, "Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him?" The once again, the beast being NATO, the EU. Okay, and it's the first beast was what the Roman Empire, but Esau through, uh, uh, uh you know, the succession of time, he is the the second beast, which is Babylon, the great NATO and the EU, coming in that same you know uh, spirit as the first beast, because it's the same people. They people uh, are these heathens still look at NATO and the EU, which comprises of America and different EU countries as being a uh, dominant world superpower. So they say, who can make war with him? But guess what? <laughs> Yahweh Shai and his angels are going to make war with him. Even though the other nations are going to make war, there's going to be a World War III. All right. In World War III, Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed by nuclear missiles. However, all nations' armies are going to be destroyed by Yahweh Shai. All right, so let's get this other scripture. Just a uh, second Kings chapter two, verse 12. It says, and Elisha saw it and he cried, actually, 11. It says, and it came to pass as they were still on and talked that behold, the, a, there appeared a chariot of fire, all right, a vehicle of fire and the horses of fire and departed them both asunder and, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Okay, and that's speaking about what? The actual chariots. It says, and Elisha saw it and cried, and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he and took hold of his own clothes and rent, rent them in two pieces. 
So it was there and then it disappeared. And when you read, you know, when you listen to that, um, that uh, 60 Minutes episode, they were, they were saying that how it was there and then it disappeared. And in a second, two seconds later, it appeared some 60 miles away. Okay, 60 miles away in, in a second or two. <laughs> Esau don't got no smoke for that, man. He got no smoke for that. So let's get this last scripture um, in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 63, verse 1, it says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Because when Yahweh returns, he's returning from the, from, from the east. And he's coming to Babylon, man. He's coming to the west. And his angels with him. All right? Traveling in the greatness of his strength, aka what the chariots. So we know, you know, Esau, the Lord God Esau, you know, having this information come out, whether or not you know these devils got something up their sleeve, we're trying to you know do their their false, their blue uh, project blue uh, blue blue project is it project uh, blue beam? So like it, your project uh, project uh, blue beam or whatever. But we know that hey, the Lord is having these things you know, manifest more and more and more because we're coming into that time, you know. So I just want to end it there. Lord willing, edifying to the elect. Call Lord Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Rakaq Till next time, Shalom.